Today we're going to be talking about five habits that are destroying your body if you are over 40 years old. And look, if you are not over 40 years old, it probably will be, so you might want to nip these habits in the bud before you get there. Let's get into it. Oh guys, this is also the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I want to hear about your successes. I definitely want to hear about those setbacks. So I came across an article in Eat This Not That titled Five Fitness Habits That Are Destroying Your Body After 40. And I saw that title and I thought to myself, that sounds like the sort of sensational title that I'd like to talk about. Because really, I think it's going to give us something to complain about. And isn't that what we like the best? Okay, so you and I, we have probably been working out a while. If we haven't, we're probably going to be working out a while because that's what, that's what keeps us healthy. Right? And on our journey, on our fitness journey, on our running journey, we might develop some habits that are detrimental to our overall health. So on each of these things, I want you to tell me if you actually do it. Are you doing these things that are going to destroy your body after 40 years old? Oh, and I especially want to hear from you if you have been doing these things and you've already destroyed your body. Okay, so the first thing that is going to destroy your body after 40 if you don't do it is not establishing a maintenance program. So the author likens this to just driving your car and not taking it into the shop to be worked on or not worked on but not going into your scheduled maintenance. Now the author actually suggests that having a monthly massage would be the most ideal option and maybe you're out there and maybe you do have a massage massage each month. Personally, I'm not really a fan of getting a massage, so it sounds like a bit of a nightmare to do it every single month. But I think what they're really getting at is that soft tissue work is what we have to focus on. And we know it's not just as we get older, not just once we reach the age of 40. This is something that we should probably be focusing on a little earlier too. And it can be as simple as getting a tennis ball and rolling it into those trigger points. When you feel something tight in your muscles, you just want to roll it out. The same thing if you have a sore back, you can put the ball against the wall and just kind of roll it up and down the back. But I'll tell you what this sounds like this sounds like just another article telling me that I need to foam roll. They're just using the word ball instead of foam roller, but ultimately that's what it comes down to. So unfortunately, this is one of the things that I am guilty of. I do not have a maintenance program. I don't foam roll as much as I should. Perhaps I'll foam roll tomorrow just because I've talked about it on this video. But if I do, it will be for one day, maybe two days if I'm really gung-ho. But I've accepted that I just don't like foam rolling. So it's unlikely I'm going to use a tennis ball either to roll out my sore muscles. Next up is mobility. Yoga is an ideal thing that we can do just to keep our mobility in check. And the author points out something pretty important. She says that mobility is more than just getting down into a position and stretching for a couple of seconds, right? It's not just holding a stretch after we come back from a run. The idea is to move in and out of shapes with relaxed breathing. And she says it helps remold the tissues. And this part I can get behind, it promotes the future access to these positions. So go ahead and get in your downward facing dog because in 20 years from now, you're probably gonna to wanna to get in that position. And if you don't do it now, you might not be able to. As soon as I get done filming this video, I'm gonna go and practice corpse pose as that is my number one position. I could just do that all day long. Okay, the number two thing that will destroy your body after the age of 40 is insufficient protein intake. And this is probably pretty important if you are not getting enough protein in your regular diet. Obviously, we want to have a balanced diet and we've got the main macros, fats, carbs, protein, but fats and carbs are gonna provide your body with fuel and energy, whereas protein is gonna rebuild your muscles. Increasing your protein intake is going to help with weight loss, it's gonna help keep a lean muscle mass. And if you are still going to the gym, working out, which you should, it's gonna help you increase strength. Okay, the third thing that is going to destroy your body after the age of 40 is poor hydration. Now, I don't know if you've heard this, but I hope this isn't the first time you've heard that we have to hydrate. And of course, there are loads of companies out there with their sugar-filled drinks that will hydrate you well. Now, I'm just kidding, we probably need to avoid these sugar-filled drinks. And not just for the, the possible weight gain that we can get from drinking too much sugar, but also we don't want these, these sugar highs and crashes that we get if we have too much sugar. Keep ourselves on an even keel. Drinking the right amount of water is also gonna support our workouts and support a healthy body weight. And our body's connective tissues rely on adequate hydration. So if you are not adequately hydrated, your connective tissues can get in a brittle state and they can become more susceptible to injury. I don't actually know if that's true, but the article says it, so there must be something to it, right? And I got this article from the internet. Okay, so the article brings up something that I found pretty interesting. It says that when you have your nutrition dialed in, it's then that you can start paying attention to electrolytes. And also that when you eat a clean diet, you may need to add electrolytes back into your water or add them into your water to maintain a proper balance. Of course, these are sodium, potassium, magnesium. But I'm thinking that in order to eat healthy, I'm just going to add a little more salt to my fries for dinner tonight and we'll just call it a day. Okay, the fourth thing that is going to destroy your body after the age of 40 is not warming up appropriately. Guys, I'm kind of laughing because this is just 
this is crazy stuff. It's all new to me. Have you ever heard this, that you have to warm up before your workouts? Well, the article says that we should be warming up for at least 10 minutes before we work out. And when we're warming up, the idea is to get our heart rate up, maybe even break a little sweat, and to be doing movements that are going to mimic what we're going to be doing in the actual workout. So obviously when we warm up, we are going to do our workout a lot better. It's going to feel a lot better sooner, but it's also going to reduce the risk of injury. And I think that is the most important takeaway. But I don't know about you, and I want to hear from you. How long do you typically warm up before you go for a run. The article does point out that we're all very busy and usually the place that we take time from is the warm-up rather than the actual workout itself. And I am guilty of that. I usually do a few stretches, a few lunges, some squats, and call it a day and hit the run. Probably gonna come back and bite me someday. Unless I keep reading these revolutionary articles, tell me what I need to be doing. The fifth thing that's going to destroy your body after the age of 40 is going at your workouts too aggressively after a period of low inactivity. So I think for us as, as runners, we've heard this in the style of the 10% rule. You don't want to increase your volume more than 10% week over week or you're going to risk getting injured. Now I know this is none of you. Do you guys out there watching me, you guys run all the time or you go to the gym all the time or you jump rope all the time. You're very physical and active people. But the doctor that they interviewed for this article said it's usually weekend warriors that he sees in his clinic. This is a physical therapist. And it's the people that go out and they do something just insane, insanely intense on the weekends. And then, wouldn't you know it? They pull a muscle, they hurt themselves, they throw their back out. You and I, we are lifelong, lifelong runners, lifelong exercisers. It's unlikely that we're going to become a weekend warrior, but we still have to pay attention to it. Can't do too much too soon. Guys, I know I really phoned this one in this week. So to summarize, we need to foam roll, do yoga, eat well, drink enough water, warm up before we work out, and don't do too much too soon. Guys, I hope you have a pen with you and you're writing this stuff down. But if you didn't, go back to the beginning, watch the video again. There's a lot of nuggets in this one. And I actually had a pretty good week of running. Now I am back from holiday, but I got back at the end of the week. So I figured I would just make this video without my actual week of training inserted in, but that will continue next week. And if you have made it to this point in the video, because I said I phoned it in, why don't you drop the phone emoji in the comments, just so I know you've made it all the way to the end of the video. And guys, don't forget to let me know about your week of running. Remember, successes and setbacks. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.